A very, very warm welcome back to Alma, Missouri for episode 17 with me, Mr. Seely P. We're back here on Alma. It's been a busy couple of weeks. What with Lama and everything else, you know. You know how it is. Seeding got completed. Uh, as you've seen, I've just delivered what we had in the silo, not all of it, but we had some sorghum in the silo and the rest of the corn has gone over to the um, grain mill. So that's now processing the... Um, oh, blow. Is it the fine... The fine flour, anyway, the special flour, and the um, regular flour. Both of those are on distributing to go into the bakery. And I've set the bakery, because it's only dawned on me if I'm running flour. I'm sure, did I say this last episode? Um, I can make bread as well. So not only are we making cornbread, we're making regular bread. And then once we get some sugar, if we get some sugar <laughs> from our production at some point, who knows, um, we're going to then get the sweet cornbread going, which I know I've been talking about a lot. We have got a fertising contract, and I'm hoping as we move forward we're going to get some more contracts to pick up because the money's gone down a little bit. But what I'm doing with this contract, we've got enough money to do it now. I'm going to expand our greenhouse business, so we're sort of making more of a sort of market garden of the farm area. Because um, I was, I was, well, I was looking at the bakery stuff, and uh, it suddenly dawned on me there's all the stuff there to make apple pie and all that stuff. I didn't do the pumpkin pie. It's not that I was going to do, but when I saw the apple pie, I said, oh yeah, apples. And then remembered, we've got um, on here, there are fruit greenhouses. Uh, and there's some fruits on here that I haven't done before. Oh yeah, sorry, I thought, hey, that's, that's not working. Uh, why am I going across? Well, I could set my width to, uh, to narrow it. But as you can see, this strip widens as it goes. So it's easier if you've got a wide strip that narrows, so I could come from the other way and come that way. And as I drive down, I gradually narrow the width of the spread. But I've often found going across a field, I'm probably not quite there yet, am I there right? Going across like that, I can get the exact width I want to get, and we just run across the field until I get to a point where my 42 meter width will run, no problem at all. And then I'll just crack on from there. There we go. And yes, it's more passes because you've got to go backwards and forwards, but it works. So we're doing that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hopefully the payment from this, I think this is a 20, what was this one? 29, 28, 29,000. That almost pays for two greenhouses. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, but I think we need manure. So what, what I've got to do now is decide because of fertilizing contracts that might be coming up as well as we start to do more and more harvest contracts is um, the manure that I'm putting into my fertiliser production, I'm going to need manure to go into the greenhouses. So it's the, the, those new ones, the fruit ones, are water and manure. So it'll be diverting some to each, or run one, then run the others, or I don't know. I'm assuming the greenhouses won't run down on, on manure too quickly, um, but we'll see how that goes. But So I might be skipping ahead of time a little bit, um, and I'm, I'm going to be honest... Once I get to doing the sweet cornbread and run these extra fruits, because that was another thing, I'm looking thinking on here, what haven't I done? Because I wanted to wait until we get the corn harvest done because I want to do the popcorn factory. We've got tomato ketchup running, so we'll have done cornbread, sweet cornbread, the fruits on here, hopefully tomato ketchup, um, and then hopefully popcorn. So we've picked up a few of the things on here. 
I did a big carrot harvest, we've expanded the farm, we've done the soup factory, you know, it, we've done more than I thought we were going to actually. Um, but it's just been one of those, another one where time. And, I, and I, I still think, as I said, that doing two Let's Plays um, diverts, it sort of, I know for a lot of people they prefer to have an option to watch one or the other. Because if, if there's something I'm doing on one Let's Play that people particularly don't enjoy, if I'm going more heavily into productions or I'm going, going more heavily into, not realistic farming, but you know what I mean, it's, it's more, like the court farm is, is more of a, normal farming is the wrong way to say it, but you know what I mean. Um, it gives people the option to watch one or the other. But I'm finding that... I had a conversation, actually. I had a couple of conversations yesterday. Sorry, I'm doing my usual thing. I'm waffling, but it's all right. Um, having, I'm going to keep referring to Lama because I'm, I'm still buzzing over that. I had two conversations yesterday. I was on... I did a Discord call with DJ Goham. We were talking about Lama and the sort of knock-on effect of it and the impact on, on what it meant to all of us that were there and that kind of stuff. And what we kind of learned from it, what we can take away from it. And then Kermit in the United States, uh, who runs the American office for Giants up in Chicago, um, messaged me and said, oh, could we have a chat about Lama? Because Giants are interested, you know, they want feedback from the people that were there and that kind of thing. So I had two sort of pretty important calls yesterday. And it's that weird thing that I'm talking to two guys who I get on really, really well with. And it's just like having a chat with a friend, you know. And realising part way through that they're sort of technically business calls. It's to do with what we do. It's to do with our job, our work, you know. It's to do with giant software. It's to do with the game moving forward. And, and it struck me that was kind of, wow, I'm, yeah, I don't normally do that, you know. Um, and so the Lama thing, it's still very, very fresh. And, and I'm going to say again, uplifting and amazing I, I i don't i know i haven't done i've only done one, one court farm video since we got back because the straw harvest pack dropped when i got back there were mods there were four maps it was just it's been crazy you know absolutely bonkers um but it was an amazing experience and i just want to for anyone that's watching that was there thank you for coming it was amazing if i met you um if it was for an autograph it was for, for a selfie or just a chat it was fantastic and we all said that was why we were there we, we were there to meet people we were there to interact with people we were there i don't know it was just brilliant absolutely amazing it was the perfect storm everything came together we were going to do llama we were going to do a community meetup then giants announced they were going to be going with farming simulator league their first time in the uk with farming simulator because they have all the gaming rigs and stuff so people can play being that it was a big farming show as well, there was that interaction between real life farmers and the farming simulator community, which was amazing. Um, I've talked about Joe Sills and Tom Pemberton a lot on my channel because I watched them a lot. I got to meet them both, which was amazing. I met Caleb Cooper again, Caleb was there. Um, and corny as this seems and sounds, and I'm not being disingenuous in any way, shape or form. Yes, it's awesome meeting people that you watch. Um, because I, I was kind of starstruck. There was a whole lot of stuff I wanted to talk to Tom Pemberton about, and I just got a bit tongue-tied. I, I was up, I, you know, I'm, I'm standing here talking to the guy. Meeting them was amazing, but meeting you guys that were there for the show to meet uh, was was better. It was more real. It was more, I don't know. Um, we we heard lots of stories from different people. We we had so many amazing interactions with so many amazing people. I don't know, but so I'm still I'm still kind of buzzing on that. And I think the one thing I've I know that everyone's been saying, and it's that thing you know, you can talk to your loved ones, you can talk to friends, people can offer you advice, and you, you know you listen to it and you try as as hard as you can to follow that advice and. Sometimes it takes something, and it and it's strange how, what it can be sometimes that makes you suddenly go, oh blimey, they were right. You know, not saying that they weren't, but it's funny how something will just smack you around the face and go, right, okay, wake up, stupid, and and st you know, and that was the whole you know when I get stressed about negativity and that kind of stuff. Everyone I spoke to was ultra ultra positive. Everyone was like, you know what, just do what you're doing and that mantra that I've talked about so many times before came out from different people 
And in talking to DJ Goham and Kermit yesterday, the same thing came out of if you have made a difference to one person that day, then you've done a good thing. You've, you've made a difference. It doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter about anything else. You know, it, it's a, a difficult balance for that thing of your like to dislike ratio and that kind of thing. It doesn't matter. Because if you've helped one person that day, all that stuff pales into insignificance. You know, I've said so many times, people will leave comments on videos saying, thank you so much, you've helped me through a difficult time in my life. Or, and people don't tend to, in comments, go into great detail. Often if I get a, a direct message, someone will go into more detail about their life and what's happened and that kind of stuff. But meeting all these people at Lama who were telling you their story face to face, seeing the emotions, seeing the expressions, and you know, that's what really was that big slap around the face, that kind of, you know. All of that was a roundabout way of saying, but I th in a conversation I was talking to DJ yesterday, and um, we were talking about jobs. Not what we do, but jobs generally. And when you get employed to do a job, and your job description says this, but then the company you work for gets you to do multiple other jobs, which you're technically not being paid for. And we both said, the thing is, you can do the job you're paid to do well, really well, to the best of your ability. If you're given two jobs to do, you're only going to do 50% on both because you can't give 100% to both because you're split already. If you've got more than two jobs, and then the whole thing then spirals because you can't possibly give 100% to all aspects of it um, if you're split with your time and you know you've the, the pressure's on to get stuff done, you will often cut corners, do things not quite to the best of your ability to get them done. Now, I'm not saying that's everybody. That, that is a general sweeping statement. And I think I'm finding that with running two Let's Plays again. I know I used to, and uh, for some reason, I don't know if it's just the new version of the game uh, that's more unwieldy. I've said that before. It's a, it's a difficult, it's a different thing to do now. I mean, we don't know what the new version of the game's going to look like, you know. Um, but I think I might go back to running one Let's Play. Because with all the best will in the world on this, this was supposed to be, like I said before, I was going to be streaming this every other episode. And it was going to be, you guys choose what I do kind of thing. And, and it was a great idea in theory. But the practicalities of it and my day-to-day -day life and the day-to-day... -day, because of what I do, if, if, if all I did was Let's Plays, that wouldn't have been a problem. But because I do Let's Plays and Mod Reviews and Map Tours, um, I will try and get a Let's Play up every day. And then obviously you're always watching to see when Giants drop mods, when giant, Giants drop mods and maps. And, you know, I then will get on to doing my Mod Review, do my Map Tour. And, um, like I say, you're splitting yourself, you're spreading yourself, and something's got to give. And unfortunately, you get a period like now where it's been well over a week since I put a video out on here and on Court Farm. And I get back on here and I love it. I love I love farming. I love playing the game. I love doing what I'm doing. But interestingly, I love making the mod reviews and I love doing map tours just as much. Because I like... And so many people we spoke to at Lama and there were so many content creators and map makers and modders there as well, which was brilliant to meet all these amazing people. Um... And what was cool was talking to them about the map tours and mod reviews and how you're spreading the word for modders and map makers about what they've put out, what they've done, how their mods work, what the map looks like, what the features are. And that was always my goal. It was that thing, like I've said so many times before, when I started playing, if I was stuck on something or a new map came out and I'm going around the map trying to find things and look for the features of the map, I thought, well, if I, if I want to know, then other people might want to know, so I'll make a video on it. So it's that thing, I don't know. It's, um, I'm kind of re-evaluating everything. It, it was, um, again, another corny thing to say, but it was kind of life-altering. It, it was... In such a yeah a strange thing I don't know if you can tell I, I think I'm still it's been a week you know since we got back because it's Friday yeah we went it was Lama was Tuesday Wednesday no Wednesday Thursday we went Tuesday Wednesday Thursday came home Friday so it's been an entire week since Lama since we got back from Lama but I'm finding I'm still processing everything that happened I'm remembering different conversations that I'd forgotten about um and what was incredible was just the sheer amount of people that were there. 
it was just incredible. Um, so many people came out for FSL, for the the content creators were there. For the you know, to, to, I got to meet Lancy Boy, Ro, um, Ross N Mods. I got to meet Mark Thor that does the Quick Bail. Um, there was Cavalier Roy that does maps. Um, who else? Oh, there were so many other people. I, I said I would do this. I would forget people's names. Um, so many people. That, did I say Lancy Boy? We, we, yeah, we were hyper to meet these guys because, as I said to all of them that I met, and I shook their hands and said, you're the guys that make this. You know, you're the guys that expand on the game. You're the guys that add the Im more immersion and you know all the stuff you bring out. I, I look forward to reviewing stuff and looking at stuff because I'm excited to see what new, what's coming to game. You know what's new so um yeah i don't know it's um i'm i'm, I'm in a process of re-evaluation and looking at yeah what what can change and what i can do oh yos of course i always forget yos because yos is kind of part of the group the guys that organized it all and you know yos is just it's yos is yos you know we i love him to bits i think he's a fantastic guy yos but of course, Joss makes mods as well. He's a modder, you know. And I think often all of us, we kind of forget that. He's just part of the group. And, you know, anyway, I'm going to carry on getting this done. And then I may skip ahead um, once I get paid, just so I've got some more manure built up. So I may see you in May. Um, hopefully, we'll have some more, maybe some harvest contracts and stuff pop up. But I want to get those greenhouses in and get some fruit underway. Hopefully, we'll have some more tomatoes. Hopefully, we'll have some more sugar, so we, or some sugar, so we can get the sweet um, um, cornbread going. And we'll go from there. That's, yeah, that's all I can promise. <laughs> It's seven o'clock in the morning. It's May one. Let's have a look and see what's going on on the farm. Um, I've I switched over all my greenhouses here that I've got already to tomatoes. I haven't got any more yet. Um, that's the point actually. We'll have to whiz out to the um, ketchup factory. I can see we've got some more firewood. So we're going to have that daily thing, but I, I might skip ahead until we've got like a, a massive load to deliver in one go. We've got 120 grand, so nothing here. I'll have about 3,000 and something litres of milk, because that's our daily production of milk. If we swing around, we've got sugar, we've got a sugar, brilliant. I'll get that over, we, we can finally get some sweet cornbread going. Um, our soy drink, our ice cream and our butter, that's great. Oh, we've got some wool. We've got a full pallet of wool, that's brilliant, that's going. And then, what's the other thing? We'll be swoop. Let's have a look at our swoop. Now we're looking on our soup factory. What? Okie dokie then. That's pretty good. Happy with that. Right, brilliant. Not bad at all. I was hoping, if we look on our, um, let's have a look on here. And we go to our growth. What? That's ridiculous. That entire field was on red, ready to harvest. Um, I thought we will have a massive harvest on there. I've got my root crop harvester, absolutely brilliant. Um, but the harvest contract didn't come up. So I skipped through the night to the morning and it was still sitting on red. And now it's saying harvested. Why did that not come up? How bizarre. Okay, well anyway, right. So we should have a bit more manure. So what I'm gonna do, this space here that I said I wasn't sure what I might do, I'm gonna put two greenhouses, one that way and one that way. I was trying to put two in directly behind here because I put that there. I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna fit them in. I suppose I could put one here and one there maybe. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I think I'll put them both here. Let's have a look. Um, so, if we go into here, go to our production and go to our greenhouses. So what was added in to Alma, Missouri, we've got the greenhouses that do the pumpkins. And then we had this one added in here, the greenhouse fruits. So I'm going to put a couple of those in. So I'm just thinking if I, if I do it that way, it might overlap. But I'm thinking that way... One there and one there, maybe? That could work, couldn't it? I'll bring it down a bit further. Let's go with that one there. 
and then that one a little bit further up so I've got space next to it do some landscaping around it yeah if I do some landscaping around that so these need I'm sure it was water and uh, that's what it said in the thing didn't it so lemon orange pineapple oh you know what oh I'm torn now lemon orange or pineapple pineapple I've never done pineapple before let's do some pineapples it's a pity there's not a limoncello factory <laughs> I know there's the whole alcohol I still want a brewery I think a brewery would be awesome that would be something I know PC have got stuff like that but I just I know the whole you know giants are family friendly and they don't want to be promoting alcohol that kind of thing they're not promoting it they're just you know it's a it's a fact of life it gets made <laughs> adult juice is made all over the place so what do I do pineapple orange lemon I could do a mixture I guess but I'm going to put this one on pineapple. I'll get the stuff in in a moment. And then this one. Should I go lemon first? I don't know. I'm quite fancy doing orange, but... Oh, that's this one here, isn't it? This shouldn't be a big... This shouldn't be a difficult decision. Lemon or orange? Lemon or orange? Both. That's going to be cool, having those running. I might switch those over. I haven't decided, right. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of water in. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my the sugar will go over. Actually I might just do it, I might just do a load up and a run today anyway. Um I'm not gonna put a huge amount of water in here because I'm not sure how much they take. I can't remember. So I'll just go over to my water tap. I'll have some more tomatoes in a little while, but when I take the run up, we'll we'll go out to the um ketchup factory and see if we've got any ketchup being produced. Just thinking if we allowed maybe 10,000 litres for each one, that may be too much, but if I put about 20,000 litres in, if I need more, I can come back and get more, but I can gauge what I need. That'll do. Because I got rid of the smaller tanker, so. That's loud in reverse. Whoa. Let's avoid reversing. I mean, it's not much quiet going forward, but. You want to take all of it. <laughs> At least I'll know I need to get some more. <laughs> okay, that's boring. Uh, that one. Okay, what are we looking at? 20. Right, I'll get some more. I'll see you in a bit. Well, I've got the water in, and we'll get the manure in, and I'll get those going. And then we'll get over. I have taken on, when I said about the contracts, actually, I was saying about, um, I was hoping that one would come up, and it didn't, but I have got a harvest contract for peas. So what I'll do is, when we've done all this, and we've got this running, I'll grab the harvester, we'll whiz out, and we'll get the pea harvest. I did it again. I'm reading the thing, field six. Just so in my head, I know where field six is. Oh yeah, down there in the corner. Cool. Oh man, I'm gutted about that. I'm genuinely, genuinely frustrated. Right, water's in. It was 25,000 litres. Of course it was. How are we looking at our tomatoes? Uh, 964, okay, so not long till we've got two more tomatoes from here that could go over. What I might do is speed up time a little bit till I've got two more pallets. So when I take the sugar, I can take the sugar and the tomatoes, we can, so it would give us a reason to go out to the tomato factory anyway. Um, these will be a little bit long because I switched those over later, 779, so yeah, we won't have tomatoes from there quite yet. But I did switch these over. We've got the water in now. Now it's for the manure. I've got to make sure I split this evenly, so I'm not sure how much I've got in here, but let's go to the 
Okay, so if I do one full bucket on each, it won't fill it, but it'll be enough to get us started. I've done a little bit, little bit of landscaping round, so um, a little bit of um, graveling, and then a little bit of the sort of intermediate gravel and grass texture around it. So we've got the bits there we drop off into the manure, and the bits where the pallets will spawn are clear, and I've just continued the road here, so we've got all of our little, it's all a network across, so I say that way, we're not driving across the grass, as you can see, you know. It will still happen. Right, why is that dropping on the floor and not going to the basket? That's weird. I'm not wrong, this is... No. Am I losing my mind here? Greenhouses. Uh, where are we? Alma, Missouri. Greenhouse fruits. Yeah, manure. So why is that tipping on the floor? Did they actually go in? No. Maybe it won't take it from the bucket. It's, it will only take it... That's a lot. What's that? 700 litres has vanished. Where has that gone then? gone somewhere. Maybe it'll only take it from a trailer? That's weird. It shouldn't do. Where has the rest of that gone? It's disappeared into the ether. No. Come on, please be here somewhere. No. Oh. I'm a little bit concerned. I'm not going to lie. Maybe it will. Um, I'll put it into a trailer and hopefully we'll get a trigger thing come up. Oh, great, okay, so I've lost some. Let me grab the trailer and try it with a trailer. That's odd, because it should... Mm. I hope the sound was alright that last bit. I've just realised I'm chatting away. I started recording, looked up and I hadn't pulled my mic down into position. So. <laughs> Potentially I was quiet. Apologies if I was. Let's grab the... Uh, the regular 4755. If you watch my Lama look at Lama video, I talked before I went that Ollie Bloggs had mentioned there was going to be a 4955 there that had been sort of reconditioned and done up for the show. I found it. Oh, I mean, you look at that, and yeah, it's it's the length of the bonnet is insane. And it was no the real one. It was so cool seeing one up close. And in, other than the number on the side being different, it was this tractor. When I'm looking at it, I think, that's so cool. I'm using those in-game at the moment. It's absolutely brilliant. All right, let's get some in. And see if I do get the trigger come up. I'm, I'm mildly puzzled at the moment. Herbed. Is that the word? <laughs> Maybe. So I think a lot of my productions might have run out of stuff, so I need to be checking because I think my fertilizer productions probably run out of manure. I've got 25,000 litres in it. That's pretty cool. Uh, where are we here, is it? Oh, no, I had it turned off anyway. Oh, that's cool. So obviously I'm using the manure now. Right, fingers crossed. Yeah, how weird. Maybe it was just in front of it then. I had to tip it in front of it, not actually on it. That's curious. Uh, so, oh yeah, I mean, that barely touches the side. So when, as we move forward in time, I'll get more and more, and I'll gradually fill it up. We'll see how much that uses. I'm not sure how quickly it will use it. And it might take a while before we get some lemons and oranges and pineapple. If the tomatoes and the strawberry production is anything to go by, it will take a little while. But what I can do now with this, if I come alongside here, that's 3,000 or doing the next one and then that last little bit I'll put back in the first one and we are good to go on our new productions. They look really cool. I like that. 
Did I leave myself enough room there? I did. Cool. Brilliant. So, let's load a few bits up. I will do another daily run of all my stuff because it pays quite well. <laughs> yes. And that's the beauty. That's the thing. When I've got all these productions running now and I've got them stocked up and they should chug away for a while, I'm going to have to do some more logging at some point because I'm going to... The um, firewood production will start to run down because it is starting to run down. Um, but we're getting a daily income as well as any jobs and contracts we take on. We're getting that daily income, which is where we need to be at. The, the farm isn't self-sustaining because obviously it's, a lot of these things still require products. They require being topped up and replenished and things being removed and pallets taken. But we are at a point where we are generating an income and not a bad income. And I say daily and obviously there's that misconception when I say, Dale, oh, that's ridiculous, you're in that daily. But because I'm doing two day months, each day is half a month. So for half a month, the income's not bad. So our monthly income's pretty good, which means then the knock-on is our yearly income. It's pretty good. It's not crazy money. It's not the road to a billion. It's not, you know, can I make 10 million in this harvest, kind of that sort of thing. But it's it's a respectable amount of money. Right. I will see you over... Well, dropping off the sugar, momentous occasion. We'll get the sugar dropped off and... Um, Hopefully, oh, I'll speed up some. We'll get a couple of pallets of tomatoes and we'll go over and we'll check on our tomato ketchup. But um, for the moment, we've gone a bit fruity. A bit fruity. Lemony? No, that was wrong. Lemony snickets. They do look good though. Oh, I haven't. Yeah, what do the pineapples look like? I mean, they look like pineapples, obviously, but... Cool. And we'll say it again. Pay attention to the small stuff. As I said, talking to modders and map makers, it's very easy to gloss over stuff, to go, oh, look, I'm making lemons, I'm making oranges, I'm going to get pallets of them, I can take them and sell them, what are they worth? But just taking the time to appreciate animations, sound effects, textures, the look of it, how it runs, how it operates. Yeah. <sighs> My passion and excitement has been reinvigorated. I think that's the other thing. It's, um, yeah. Feeling very positive at the moment, which is good. Answer as a percentage, I would say I'm up around 90%, maybe even 95. Let's go and grab the pallet forks and load some stuff up. We're in the pickup. I have taken the time to load up the trailer. That's got everything on it that we need to bring and do our daily selling. Um, you've seen me do that before, so I'll do that off camera. So if the money jumps up a little bit, that'll be why. Um, and I had that weird thing with this because I, I forgot this was technically an auto load pickup I, I hadn't really thought about it before although you can't see because it's clipped through but on the bottom it's showing I've bought my butter I've got my sugar and I've got my tomatoes because those I didn't want to sell so I didn't want to get those mixed up on the trailer but I'll bring those separately so I'll put them in the pickup when I put the pallet of tomatoes on the pallet of tomatoes auto loaded into these brown boxes um, so when I put the other stuff on it they load you kind of over the top of it so what I'm hopefully going to do now we shouldn't have any stuff there because that should have manually gone over or like auto delivered. Um, what we should over have over here now though, we should have um, cornbread and we should have bread pallets which will need to be loaded up and sold. So that's good. There you go. So we've got bread being made as well. So our bakery is properly cracking away now. Look. Let me come over to here. Please unload. Oh, that's... Oh, there we go. So our butter's gone in. 
as as our sugar, which is what we need. And these are the boxes. That's the tomatoes that loaded on like that, which is really odd. Anyway, they're on there, which is great. Um, so what I need to do now is go around to the bakery and we can get our sweet corn. We won't get much of it, but we can get it started. Same with the tomato ketchup. I, I'm not even sure if we've got a full palette over there, but we'll take the tomatoes we got. So we do that and we'll go to sweet cornbread. Let's go. We'll get that chugging away. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm so happy about that, but I am happy about that. We are cracking along. And this was another conversation I had. We were talking about the straw harvest pack and the production itself and that it's... You don't make any more money from making pallets anymore because at the pallet sell point you can sell loose product. So there's no incentive to do palletizing because you make as much money selling the loose. There should be a different price. But because of FS22, the way that you sell stuff now, because you can pour things, and whereas before a pallet was different to loose material, but now if you take a bale and you put it over a mixer, you can technically gradually take that bale out so everything has a pour to it. So now, if you take pallets to the sell point on the straw pack, it reacts the same way as if it was loose material so you can sell loose. And the prices aren't that great either. I think it works out because when, you, when you're making the pellets, it's, you're taking, you're getting a quarter of the product you put in because it compresses them down. If you sell a regular bale for the price they're offering, but then you sell pellets for the price that pellets are offering, because it's been compacted down and you've technically lost three quarters of your product, it works out almost the same money as selling um, a regular bale. So it's a bit of a weird one. So as we were talking, I was talking to DJ and the guys at, you know, at Lammer, and we were saying the thing with productions now, yes, it is a product, it's products in pallets out or products in you get something out. But what makes it different is what the detail that goes in, again, by the modder, the person that's made it, the factory, the production. What do the pallets look like? The labelling, if it's not pallets of a particular product, what is the product that's on the pallets? You know, it's all that stuff. I know people have got very much down that route of, oh, you know, it's just one thing in and pallets out and what's the point? But it's all of that. It's that, that immersion, that doing something different. I know I've talked about it before, but it's, I don't know, it's just... How I feel now. I'm not sure. Can I unload these? Not enough space to unload. That's going to be interesting. I just was hoping. Oh, hang on. There we go. Oh, right. Oh, I was, I was thinking that I was just in the wrong place to unload. That's all right. But we have got some tomatoes to catch up. Look, <laughs> our first pallet of the red stuff, ready to go off to diners and whatever else, wherever else it's going to go. That's cool. Uh, so what we'll do, go to here. It should all still be chugging. Well, it says down the bottom there now, doesn't it? Where are we? Let's go to the door. So we've got now 2,000 litres in. Still got plenty of water. That will chug away. We'll get some more. Excellent stuff. We well, know that's working. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the rest of the stuff back to unload and sell. I'll come and grab the tomato ketchup. I'll load up the um, bread and the cornbread so I can get that sold as well. I'll head back to the farm and then we'll head out. Now I have got a harvesting contract, but it looks like we've got rain. Um, so if I can get to it before it starts raining, because I don't want to lose anything. But again, I might have to skip ahead time and, and see where we end up with regard to um, when the rain stops. I'm going to check the weather forecast. Let's have a look and see what the weather's saying. May 2. That's interesting. May currently it says rain. Oh, not till two o'clock this afternoon. Oh, that's right, got plenty of time. It's only just gone nine. So, whilst we've got rain on the way, not for a while, so we should be good. See you in a bit.
we're definitely clouding over. However, da daily sales, I'm not going to lie, what were we on, 80,000? Maybe 88? So we've made, what, 60, 70, maybe 80,000, 70 to 80,000? And all of our sales have ever visited various different products. That is a win. I'm happy with that. But I was going to, I was in my mind ticking over thumbnails and what I would call this episode. And I was going to do the, you know, when life gives you lemons, you know, that kind of thing. And then when I was going through the prices, working out where I could sell stuff, it suddenly dawned on me that as well as the fruit productions, there's a juice factory that came with this as well. So we can do the juice as well. That's right. It's getting juicy. So, yeah, I mean, um, I'm, I'm going to do the juice factory as well. But the money we just made, I think it's 40 grand. If we go in and have a look, yeah, look, 40,000 for the juice factory. Now, we are going to need sugar, <laughs> which means, again, we're, oh, that's, it's, that's bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, overlap, so we could put it in. Wow, this place is, I mean, we are properly, um, things are changing, aren't they? I need to work out where the triggers are for that. We are using every ounce of space now, aren't we? That's not bad. I can readjust the roadway a little bit and fit it between there and there. You haven't got a lot of space left now. <laughs> that was me at the start. All that, all that massive space when we took the ranch out. I so I don't know what I'm going to put here and how we're going to fill this space and what we're going to do there. But wow, okay. Um, right then, it's in. And we're still up on the whole deal. So, <laughs> we can produce the juice. Uh, where is the... Uh, there's the door. So, grape juice, apple juice, orange juice, pineapple juice, lemonade. Nice. Now I'm just deciding, do I switch one of those, the orange... I might take the orange off and just do pineapple juice and lemonade, I think. Because I'll get more products, maybe. Um, but we are going to need sugar. Oh, hang on. What do we need sugar for? Oh, the lemonade. Yeah. So lemonade will need sugar, but pineapple and orange juice we won't. So I can run the pineapples as they are. So I'm thinking they're moving forward. Because I had that weird thing happen with the sugar beet in here. I can't take that sugar beet back out. We've got so much sugar beet in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a different... I need something that produces sugar faster. I mean, the other option I've got is, because I've got some sugar beet left in here, is if I sold the sugar beet... Um, why is that saying I've got carrots stored in here? Hmm. If I... Um, sell the sugar beet I've got left and buy just buy sugar with the money. That's probably not a bad idea already got some soup so maybe yeah sell the sugar beet rather than producing sugar use the money to buy sugar even if I just buy two or three pallets just so I've got enough that I can get my juice factor underway once these start producing but what I think I'll do then um, I'll leave it running for now and just see what we end up with um, pallet wise yeah I mean that's all I can do so yeah Juicy! Right, I'm going to go and grab the harvester then. I've got a harvest to crack on with. Um, I'm <laughs> again more progress. We're we we're, we're cracking on. So it's two greenhouses and a and a factory. We've got some tomato sauce has been produced, which is brilliant. We needed to be at that point, and um, we're making good money every day. That's fantastic with everything that's running. So what we'll need to do is, as we run through this sort of harvest season, once fields become ready to harvest, provided the harvest contracts come up and don't just disappear. Um, oh, I need to repair this. Did I look at the price for repairing this? Wasn't it a lot of money? I can't remember now. Do I just accept the fact that it's... Um, I can still run it when it's not repaired? Mm, we'll see how we go. Uh, what are we doing? Beans is a regular header, isn't it? I just suddenly had a thought. Is I assume it is. Um, headers, yeah. Fill beans, regular header, right? Uh, 
Let's head out to field six. Still loving this half, so this was a really good buy. I mean, yes, it's going to need some repair, which is going to cost a bit of money, but it was nice and cheap. Well, that's a good point as well. I haven't done, um, haven't checked on prices. Of what have we got on used vehicles? Um, okay, nothing I need. That's what I sold, so I don't really need to buy that back. Okay. Disconnect that. Unfold that. Let's get some beans done. Wow, that scours it. I wasn't expecting that. And with that, we've come to the end of this episode on Alma, Missouri. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, if you're still sticking with me, thank you very much. Please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.